was in the house this morning, y'all were really out. <laughs> this is Unity of Savannah, a center for spiritual awakening, where we recognize God as life, love, and the ground of all being. And we celebrate God by what? Living, fully, loving, yes, and being all that we can be. Let's join together in our vision and our mission statements. Our vision. Centered in God's love, we inspire universal transformation, one heart at a time. And our mission. We are an inclusive spiritual community serving others with love, joy, and truth. And if you're serving as a prayer chaplain this morning, would you please stand? Our prayer chaplains are here today to hold sacred space, to listen lovingly to your prayer intention, to pray with you affirmatively, and to hold in confidence what is shared. If you'd like a one-on-one -on -one affirmative prayer, please see Brother Freddie or Sister Carol after the service. Or you can also come and see me as well. And now I'd like to introduce our minister and coordinator, Miss Becky Barbie, with our announcement. Hello, darlings. Hello. So good to see all your loving, happy faces out there. What a privilege. Uh, at the LBGT Mass Wedding and Expo is this evening. It's the Expo is from 3 to 7 at the Hyatt Regency. And then at 7 o'clock, Reverend Dale... It says next Sunday, but it's today. It's today. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight. Today. Yeah. I don't know where that came from. Okay. <laughs> You're not in charge of that, right? No, I don't have nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the wedding will be at 7, and Reverend Dale and three other ministers will be officiating. Uh, we have a booth from 3 to 7 if you want to come by and help us show the, the city, Unity of Savannah, and promote, promote this loving church, come by and sit with us. and um, We'd love to have you join us and then stay for the wedding. And then next Sunday at 2.05 is Unity out to the old ball game. We're all going to get together and go to the ball game at Grayson Stadium. So this is a great way to get to know your fellow unitics. So think about joining us. And we don't care if you have a beer. That's right. You can have a beer if you want. To. Unless your sponsor says you can. <laughs> Free the beer. Root beer. You know who you are. <laughs> And then on August the 30th, this is a must for everyone. Everyone is invited. We are having our expansion meeting. And that is we're all going to get together and we're going to vision how this church is going to look in the future. Visions for growth and prosperity. And everyone is welcome. You don't have to be a member. And we'll have pizza. So put it on your calendars and be thinking about how Unity of Savannah is going to look in the future. And then on September the 22nd through the 25th is the Unity Canuga Retreat. I have been for the last two years going again this year, and it's a lot of fun. Reverend Dale and Georgia Kyle, Kyle Shiver, are headlining along with Bishop Carlton Pearson who is a phenomenal spiritual speaker and teacher. Uh, you can look him up online. He's an amazing being. Uh, and it's, it's from Tuesday through Friday. If we get enough people together, we might bring the bus to go. So if you sign up before the 24th, you get a big discount on your stay at Canoga. And then don't forget our Thursday Unity, Silent Unity uh, prayer service here in the sanctuary at noon every Thursday. Come and join us in the silence for a 30 minute retreat from the world. And we have our prayer line 303 838 
Uh, if you want to hear our weekly affirmative prayer, or you want to leave a message for Reverend Dale or your prayer chaplain, or if you have a prayer intention that you would like to have a prayer chaplain pray with, pray for or with you, uh, you can leave it on this line and then we'll put the prayer in the prayer box and then we'll go to Silent Unity for another month of prayer. <sighs> and today we light the Christ candle to re represent God is love. God is love. God is love. Love is in me. I have the love. Since God is love and I am one with God, isn't that natural that I should love? Since God is all, should not I love all? Today I invite God into my heart as an aspect of limitless love. Love, divine love, pours through me in such a radiatory that all mean, narrow, nasty, selfish thoughts are swept away. Love washes the scales and limitation from my eyes and my sight breathes in the splendor of the universe. Through love washed eyes, I see all things in a vast luminous harmony. Now I question, does God treat anything or anyone that is unworthy of love? I think not. Where before I thought of some conditions or people as being unlovely, where before I thought of some person as being unlovely, but before I thought of myself as being unloved, I now see through to the reality. I think through to the underlying truth. I feel through to the very heart of love. God is love. And I am one God. I am love. God is love. God is in me. I am in love. God is love. And he that abideth in love abideth in God and God. Our thoughts are prayers. Our thoughts are prayers. And we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen.
breath and if you haven't already, close your eyes and just feel the love that is here for you in this sanctuary this The love of God that is always present, that abided in me and in you. Feel it emanate out from you now in all directions. And if there's a person that you would like to bless this morning, just send that love, see it flowing out from this sanctuary, enveloping them now, healing them, lifting them up. If there's a situation or a place that you would like to bless and see the spirit of harmony and truth made manifest, see the people now enveloped in God's love. The light of God surrounds them. The love of God enfolds them. And we know that as we bless, we are blessed in return. So we are renewed, we are lifted up, we are revitalized. We are great.
healing, soothing balm. It moves down over your head, over your shoulders and arms, your back, your torso, your hips, your thighs, your calves, every part of your body and the tips of your toes, bathed and immersed in a feeling of God's loving presence. We are now in the presence of pure beingness. We are immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. As we continue to breathe deeply with our own rhythm and pace, we relax even more. We allow our shoulders to drop. We might even sigh out <sighs> on the out breath. Just let go. <sighs> what a relief to rest in God's presence. What a blessing it is to be here together in oneness, in love. Knowing that there is, in reality, only one presence and only one power. And that power is love. God's love is here now in this sanctuary. Feel it within you. Feel God's presence rise up within you. Feel the life that is God. Begin to feel the sanctuary that is within you. Feel the life force power of the universe begin to expand within you. The energy of God that created the universe is moving in and through us now. It waits for our attention. So we give our full attention to the Holy Spirit in this moment. We relax, we release, we allow, and let go. We relax, we release, we allow.
which is God is love. And that is so meaningful, important, and special to me. Because no matter what, you can always come back to the simple and true meaning that God is love. sit under these power lines 
and I could feel the energy. I could feel the electricity. I could hear a buzz in the air. And I didn't know it at the time, but it was such a metaphor for God. You know, it was like I felt a little bit scared, but I was attracted to it, and I felt comforted. Like I would go down there, and I'd feel like, because it was so quiet, except for that hum. And I would feel like, you know, one day everything is going to be okay. One day I'm going to be okay. I know it. I would just know that for, for that moment. And that's such, that's such a um, symbol for meditation and prayer. You know, it's like we have to go away for a while and feel that hum, feel that buzz of God, that power. It's a little scary. It's a little awesome. You know, the only reason that we don't manifest our dreams is because we're a little scared of ourselves sometimes. When we really start to get into how powerful that we are as creative spiritual beings, it's a little unnerving at times. When you start using spiritual law and you see things demonstrate and manifest in your life, it's like, really? Whoa, okay. Oh, well now I'm responsible. Now I need to be careful. Now I need to know that I need to be in love and practice knowing God's love and being in Because I don't want to send out those other things. It, for the mere fact that look what I get back when I see them out. So fast forward from the little boy on his bike to 30 years later. I'm in Unity. I'm in my little bitty church in Huntsville, Alabama that y'all heard me talk about, which by the way was a concrete block building. <laughs> and we were having a silent retreat. We went to St. Uh, Mary's Retreat Center in Sewanee, Tennessee, which is on the edge of this big bluff. And you can see out over this mountain, there's a college up there, a little bitty town, and this little convent. And the nuns that lived and worked there didn't look anything like I thought nuns were supposed to look. They didn't have, they didn't look like penguins. And <laughs> they had regular clothes, and they were nice to us, and they made us something to eat and made our beds every day. And it was a silent retreat. We were there for the whole weekend. And on Saturday, I was roaming the grounds at the retreat center, and there was one of those big transformer-looking things on the side of the bluff. And there was a big rock right at the base of it. And I went and I laid down on that rock. And I remember looking up at the sky. That sky looked so blue, I could float right out of here. And I just realized in that moment, <laughs> everything is okay. <laughs> it really is. Like, wow. That thing that I had intended or visioned or dreamed or wished or hoped for all those years ago when I was a little boy. And suddenly I'm laying there on a rock on a bluff looking up at the sky and just feeling like, wow. Everything really is okay. And I experienced a moment of God's grace. A moment of God's love. Of just knowing that I could have laid there on that rock the rest of my life and I would have been okay. So some of y'all know, last weekend, I went to Unity of Birmingham and I did a retreat with our music director, Georgia Kyle, and also with Reverend James King from Unity of Greenville. Now this was like going home for me because it was only an hour and a half from Huntsville where I used to live. And I have friends that still live there. My aunt with Sharon lives there. My aunt Diana was there. I have some cousins there. And I got to see one of my friends and my aunt while I was there. And they're just as crazy as they always were <laughs> still today. Um, their church was so much different from the little church that I went to. They had a band called the Unity Lights, and they were musicians that played all over town professionally in the bars at night, and they came together on Sunday, and they played at church, and they were all friends, and they were really good. And there was like 300 people in this church. In my little church, we had like 20 people or so, and it's real quiet, and I go in here, and they're raising the roof, and I remember sitting in that chair thinking, if they just knew how I could They'd have me up there. One of these days, I'm going to be up there. You know, and I kind of knocked on the door a little bit and tried to, but they had it all wrapped up and they didn't need me, you know. So, um, 
So then, you know, fast forward like 15 years later, and I'm giving the message there on Sunday morning. And that weekend, I'm showing up with the intention to be present to every moment. Because once again, here's a moment of God's grace. This scared guy thinking that maybe he might possibly be a unity minister one day and getting the call to just go out and do what it is you're supposed to do no matter what anybody else says. God said you don't need anybody else's permission. You don't need anybody else's permission to live big because God has already given you permission. You don't need anybody to put a magic wand on you or ordain you or give you a piece of paper to do what you're called to do. It helps open some doors, and you're here to live large and be what you're here to be. So God told me, you don't need anybody's permission, but I was scared. And I went from being the guy in the seat wishing I could be a rock star for God. <laughs> and now I'm going back to my hometown, and I'm doing a revival and playing music and speaking at the church and being loved by all those people. They were so sweet to us. I was the, what we use in the daily word. Love is in me, I am in love. Love is in me, I am in love. One of the one of the people in our class shared an affirmation with us this week. Very similar to that. Love lives in me and I live in love. I've been using that over and over the last few days. I am in love with God. I am in love as God. I'm always in love because God is everything. So at the church last week, I experienced a moment of grace and love. But it doesn't have to be this big 20-year circle back around thing. We can experience God's love and grace in every moment. Because it's here, available all the time. Jewel said it in the video. God is love. You know, I like to get all about the mysticism and the esoteric stuff about unity and diabetes teachings and have discussions and learn about things. And sometimes I make it a little bit too complicated. Because if anybody asks you, well, what do y'all believe down there at Unity Church? The only thing that you have to tell them is God is love and God is everything. That's it. You know, it's the same message I bring y'all every Sunday morning. I just work on different ways of presenting it. <laughs> God is love God is everywhere, all the time. And because you are an expression of God, you are loved too. That's it. It's very simple. That's our message. Love and oneness. God is all. There's nothing outside of God. God is love. There's only no love. That's it. And then we come here on Sunday. And we get to feel that. And we get to be And we get to share it. And recently, I heard the story of a little boy. Jesus said, you must be like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven, to experience God's love and grace. You must take the attitude of a little child. And I learned the story of a little boy. His name is Jaden Hayes. He lives right here in Savannah. And he is a perfect example of what love in action Tonight with a little boy with enormous power, the power to lift spirits. Here's Steve Hartman on the road. It is every kid's worst nightmare, and six-year-old Jade Hayes has lived it twice. First, he lost his dad when he was four. Then last month, his mom died unexpectedly in her sleep. I tried and I tried, I tried to get her away. Couldn't. Jaden is understandably heartbroken. Anybody can die. Does anybody? But there's another side to his grief. A side he first made public a few weeks ago when he told his aunt and now guardian, Barbara DeCola, that he was sick and tired of seeing everyone sad all the time. And he had a plan to fix it. And um, that was the beginning of it. That's where the adventure began. <laughs> Jaden asked his Aunt Barbara to buy a bunch of little toys and bring them here to downtown Savannah, Georgia, near where he lives. Yes, so he could then give them away. Thank you, man. What is it you're doing? Well, 
Because those are the things that make people smile. Yeah. And what happens to their face? Really? Really? Jaden targets people who aren't already smiling and then turns their day around. He's gone out on four different occasions now, and he's always successful. It's to make you smile. Even if sometimes he doesn't get exactly the reaction he was hoping for. It is just so overwhelming to some people that a six-year-old orphan would give away a toy expecting nothing in return except a smile. Oh. Of course, he is paid handsomely in hugs. And his aunt says these reactions have done wonders for Jaden. It's like sheer joy came out of this child. And the more people that he made smile, the more this light should. Jaden says that's mostly true. But I'm still sad that my mom died. I bet you are. This is by no means a fix. But in the smiles he's made so far, nearly 500 at last count, Jaden has clearly found a purpose. I'm counting on it to be 33,000. 33,000? <laughs> <laughs> you think you can make it? Oh, I think I Steve Hartman on the road in Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> He might be a little country. <laughs> so Jason Jaden has a Facebook page. So you can go and take a picture of yourself smiling and post it to his page. And he's trying to get 33,000. So let's help him out. And if you like our video, our promo video, that's on our Facebook page as well. We'll send you a link to it this week. Class for everywhere. Let people know what we got going on.
call today was produced by Josh Fritz. If you guys know Josh and Jules was in it along with Will Julian, the J Crew, they call themselves. So if you see Josh, please tell him thank you for all the work he did on that. So we have five basic unity principles. The first one shared with you this morning, there's only God. That's it. God is love. The second principle is that we're all expressions of God's love. The third principle is called the law of mind action. Thoughts plus feelings equal outcome. The fourth principle reminds us of the power of affirmative prayer and meditation to stay centered in God. And the fifth principle tells us it's not enough just to know this, but we have to practice it as well. So we practice uh, the law of giving and receiving through the activity of tithing every Sunday. And if you feel blessed by your spiritual community, I would invite you to take out your love, room, love offering now and let's bless it together. And I would ask Brother Freddie if he would to pray over our offering and lead us in our prosperity affirmation. All encompassing, infinite, eternal Holy Spirit, everywhere equally present, all powerful, even all sufficient. We thank you for the gifts that we are about to receive, for the prayers of your word, your faith, your wisdom, your guidance for this church. May all who give receive back to themselves the fruits of spiritual mysteries and goodness in your name. So let it be. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am and have and all that I give and receive. I am grateful. God is my source. God is my power. God is me. Thank you. 
our children and our teachers. Together, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the light of Christ shining as you. And if we could all be seated for just one minute, we have a little announcement from our youth ed leader, Ms. Iris McGraw. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's always so wonderful to stand up here and see your faces. Good to see you. So, I, I'm sure you all have noticed that school's back in session. Traffic patterns are different. So we have our children back from their vacation. And um, just like Dale talked about um, years ago, him having the sense of that everything was going to be okay, I want you to know that our program is growing. More children are coming. They, you may not see them yet. They are coming. They're on their way. And we're growing our team. So you may not know it, but either you or someone that you know is being called to join our team, the youth and family team. The children need you, and you have something to give and something to gain. And I wanted to let you hear it um, in the words of some of the people who work with our children. Hi kids. Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Poser, and I have been a member of Unity for about a year now. And I love children. They really give so much back. And I decided to um, work with the children and family program here. And I just work one Sunday a month in the nursery primarily. And what's one, one hour of your month? It's so well worth it. And the people that work with the kids are great. And just seeing and being with these little loving children very special. So I'm honored to do it. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. Thank you. And our dear Miss Kitty, who will be leaving us soon. Mm -hmm. However, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, I would say uh, uh, three years ago, a friend of mine was leaving her job as a TA in a preschool system. And I said, gee, that sounds like something I would like to do. And she said, oh, don't do it. You'll hate it. <laughs> and I did it anyway. And I loved it. And it is so rewarding. The rewards are just so great. And it gives you um, an ex um, a time where you can express your inner child. And it is um, a delight, and the children a delight. And you get all kinds of hugs and kisses, and it's a warm and fuzzy feeling. So I encourage you to step up and, and just express that inner child and show some love to these children. Thank you, Kelly.
Yeah, you want that here too? Two young men. We need more ushers. Anybody want to be an usher? <laughs> you can start now. So let's uh, bless our first timers with our love offering, our love, our blessing. Together, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the light of Christ shining in us here. And please hang around and get to know some of us. We want to know you. Let's all stand up and join in our closing song.